In the previous two screencasts, you have already seen uh, information about uh, summarized spoken text, how it is assessed. Now in this one, you are going to see how to use the template in the right way so that you can fulfill all those five criteria we discussed on the previous video. So if you look at the template, you can see that there are in total five gaps in the template. These five gaps you need to fill in the right way if you want to get the score you desire. In order to fill the gap in the right way, you first have to understand meaning of some of the terms used in the template. For example, in this one, you can see we have written topic, then we have key phrases, key phrases, and then topic again. So what is topic and what is key phrases? You just need to understand that because after that, you only have to write these things in the gap and the template will be complete. So where do we get this topic and key phrases from? That's what we are going to discuss in this video. You will get this information, of course, from the recording. So what you need to do is, while you are listening to the recording, try to note down a few important phrases. Now, when I talk about phrases, people often feel confused and they ask me, what's the difference between a key phrase and a keyword? That's what I'm going to show you now. Now, let's say that someone in the recording says that the democracy of India is in progress for the last 100 years. If that is the sentence, how would you note the key phrase from the sentence? Again, the democracy of India is in progress for the last hundred years. Okay, so what you do in this is, the first phrase is democracy in India. So this is the key phrase because in this sentence, this is the point, this is the idea the speaker was emphasizing on that's why you will write down this as your key phrase and just like this almost from every sentence you'll try to grab one phrase another example of this is this textbook is really important for your exam preparation then in that case you can write exam preparation or if you can also modify a little bit you can perhaps write important textbook because in this sentence, the speaker talked about two important things, important textbook as well as exam preparation. So just like this, you will start collecting as many phrases as you can. The only difference between keyword and key phrases, if we look at these three examples I've written down here, if I only write democracy, that is a keyword. If I only write India, that's a keyword. Exam is a keyword. Preparation is a keyword. Important is a keyword. And textbook is a keyword. But if we write democracy in India, that's a key phrase. So a phrase is nothing but a combination of words which have some correlation between them, which have some relationship between them. And so they come together. They can be collocations, they can simply be ideas related to each other, or they can be something that makes sense to you when you are listening to the recording. So just like this, you'll collect as many key phrases as you can. And make sure that you have at least 9 to 10 key phrases. If you have more, that's fine. Once you have collected all the key phrases, you start putting them in the gap one by one which means in the first gap you will use two to three key phrases then in the second gap two to three three key phrases and the, in the third gap you will again use two to three key phrases so when you are writing the key phrases what you do is in the gap you write key phrase one now this kp1 means key phrase one comma key phrase two comma and then you write and key phrase three so let's say that in the first gap i'm writing all these three Key phrases what I will do is the speaker begins by explaining democracy in India comma exam preparation comma an important textbook like this so just like this you will complete all the key phrases now if you have noticed I started with the key phrase not from the topic the reason for that is once you have written down all the key phrases in three gaps here then you think which was or uh, which were the words you heard more often in the recording whatever were those words whatever were those ideas they will be the topic which you will write at the beginning and end of this template now you just need to make sure that your answer is between 50 to 70 words as you know the criteria here is you should not write less than 50 but you should not go more than 70 as well as long as you're able to do all of this you'll never have any problem in summarizing spoken text and in listening and writing because of that i hope this was helpful in the next video i'll do one question for you so that you can understand how it is actually done thank you